This video is going to cover small-scale mutations. We'll talk about point mutations and then small indels. Okay, point mutations first. A point mutation is a base substitution. In other words, the DNA sequence changes at a single base, from the original base to a different one. For example, let's say that we have this sequence, and a single base is changed such that this A is replaced with a G. This is a point mutation. And we can further classify point mutations by how they affect the sequence of a protein, if this mutation is within a protein coding region of a gene. Looking at this sequence, let's translate it. The messenger RNA from this strand will look like this, originally, and after the mutation it will look like this. Let's say that this is our reading frame, so we can use our codon table and figure out what this change will do uh, to the protein that's produced. By the way, this is a particular gene, and I'm showing you just part of the sequence. This is, in fact, the gene that codes for one of the subunits of hemoglobin. This is beta globin, which uh, hemoglobin is the protein that transports oxygen in the red blood cells of vertebrae. Okay, so our original sequence for this codon was GTG, and the mutated codon is GTA. That means that the mRNA will be CAC originally and CAU after the mutation. Let's look at our codon table and find CAC. This specifies histidine. How about the mutated codon CAU? Well, this also specifies histidine, so there's no change to the amino acid sequence of our protein. We'll call this a silent mutation, so it's a point mutation and it's silent. Let's look at another mutation in the same sequence. This time there's a change in this codon from CTC to CAC, which means our messenger RNA will be GAG originally and GUG after the mutation. Okay, let's look at our codon table and find GAG. It specifies glutamic acid. And our mutated codon, GUG, specifies valine. Okay, so we've changed one amino acid to a different amino acid, which makes this a missense mutation. Is this going to matter to the folded protein and eventually to the phenotype of the organism? Hmm. Well, it could. We can't really tell just by looking at the sequence necessarily. One thing we can do is compare these amino acids and see how similar they are in terms of structure. If the change uh, to, is to an amino acid with a similar size and similar chemical properties as the original, then it's quite possible the protein will still function, and the phenotype may be just the same or only slightly altered. So let's compare glutamic acid and valine. Glutamic acid is negatively charged. Look at that carboxyl group. Is the side chain of this amino acid hydrophobic or hydrophilic? Well, it's hydrophilic because of that negative charge. How about valine? Is this side chain hydrophobic or hydrophilic? It's hydrophobic. Look, just a hydrocarbon side chain with nonpolar covalent bonds. So this is actually a big change, and it could have the effect of making the protein fold abnormally and result in reduced function. And this, in fact, is what happens. If a person has two copies of this mutated allele, then they will have a disorder called sickle cell disease. Not only does it change the shape of the beta globin subunit of the hemoglobin protein, it can actually change the shape of the red blood cells that carry this hemoglobin, from the normal, beautiful biconcave shape to this rigid sickle shape. Okay, let's look at another point mutation. This time we're gonna change this codon from CTC to ATC, which changes the messenger RNA from GAG to UAG. Looking at our codon table, we can see that this will change a codon that specifies glutamic acid to a stop codon. So at this point, the ribosome that's reading this mutated messenger RNA will terminate translation early, and this will result in a truncated protein, one that is not the normal length. It is abnormally short, and this generally is going to reduce or maybe even completely destroy the function of this protein. Nonsense mutations like this in the beta globin gene can cause a disease called beta thalassemia, which is a very serious blood disorder indeed. Okay, this covers our three types of point mutations. We're now gonna talk about indels. Indel is a contraction for insertion deletion. We've already talked about big insertions and deletions at the chromosome level, but we can also have these very small indels of just one or a few base pairs. And this can really be a problem because if we insert a single base, we can get what's called a frame shift mutation. This means that we shift the way the ribosome is reading the messenger RNA. Just as an example, let's look at this English phrase, which consists of words of three letters each. Remember, codons are three letters, the dog and the cat. If I add a letter, but still I'm only looking at three letter words, then the sentence looks like this. 
hard to read, right? And it's the same with our ribosome, which can only read codons, chunks of three bases at a time. So if we make an insertion, we are now making something completely different because we have changed the reading frame. Same thing if we delete a single base, we simply shift it in the other direction, but we're still in the wrong reading frame. So small insertions and deletions that are not multiples of three will cause a frame shift and a huge effect on the protein being produced. Now, if we do have three bases that are inserted, well, we've added an extra amino acid here, but other than that, we would still be in frame. This could definitely have an effect on the protein and it could even abrogate its function, but the odds of a non-functional protein um, from this insertion are less than if we have a frame shift. Frame shift mutations often result in early stop codons and therefore a truncated protein. Okay, that's our discussion of small scale mutations. Hopefully you now have a better idea of the range of mutations that uh, DNA can undergo and some of the functional consequences of these mutations.